Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. It is July 29th, 2024 at 6.23 a.m. And this is vlog number 18. Alright guys, today we're just going to run through the morning routine. Take off the 3D prints and start the next one. The AMS is doing great. I think I got about two or three prints in yesterday. And we got some emptied spools there. Got a fourth one on the AMS itself, which is nice. And the prints are looking really good. Oh, we got a couple of little strings here. Oh yeah, super nice. Really love how it turned out. So we're just gonna continue this process take them all out and you know there is one thing I realized I'm one 3d printer away from having higher efficiency printing someone also mentioned it in the comments but I'll mention it here I can print two of these guys here and this is stuff I've thought about in the past now that I realize it I can print two here two there one two one and then I'll need a another 3d printer <laughs> so almost there but definitely i would need to get another one it is an early morning i'll tell you what ah nothing like a warm cup of coffee in the morning by the way it's 74.3 degrees in the 3d printer room it's a little cooler than most mornings and what about these guys so this is uh the sith throne from Star Wars Episode 9, designed by Ralph McCreary. It's for free on my Maker World profile. You can access the link down in the description below. It's a throne for your phone. So this is a little makeshift phone. You can put your phone like that or like that. And it has the ability to tilt. So you can tilt the uh, this backrest backwards so you can get the right angle on your phone. And the same with Darth Vader's throne from the Kenobi series, except this one's cool in a way where you can put your AirPods right there and then put your phone there or there and that also tilts. And then lastly we got the Bo-Katan throne for your phone, which is from Mandalorian Season 2. And again, put your phone there and there. And it also tilts. So all these have the tilt function. And all of them are on my Make World for free. For free download. So you could download them and have fun. I also have an assembly video for this one and this one. This one is, I'd say, this, the simplest to build out. And you can follow more or less the instructions on those. Because they're pretty much identical in the way they function. I'd say more so like this one. But yeah, for free, on my Make World, the link is in the description below. I am waiting for more black filament to come in. I got another pretty cool print that's uh, that I'm going to pop on uh, Make a World. But first I want to print it out. It was a lot bigger, not a lot bigger, but it was bigger. Um, I used to print it out on this. But to make it fit, I needed to make it a little bit smaller put on to here and uh, it's a really cool little model so once my new filament comes in we'll get that printed out and ready to go yesterday someone was asking me about showing the design process because as you know I did design those I did 3d model those actually I didn't go through the whole designing process but the way it works as a phone holder and uh, 3d modeling that I did it myself so I was wondering if uh, you guys are interested in something like that. I 3D modeled professionally for seven plus years in the film industry. So my background's in film when it comes to uh, 3D modeling. So I won't be using softwares that maybe we in the 3D printing community are used to seeing. I think we're used to seeing things like Fusion 360 and whatnot. But I use Maya. 
and for a lot more organic shapes I can tend to use ZBrush but if you guys are into that sort of thing I can make some videos I'll start out real simple and I got a small little uh, idea coming out pretty soon you guys will see it I know I'm kind of talking cryptic and hidden but I, I kind of want to take it naturally as it comes along but I do want to give you guys a heads up but nonetheless enough of this jibber jabber I'm gonna continue this production making sure we're all uh, doing good I still need to lubricate those X axis on all of them but I think I'm gonna start production and then we'll do that next round I did want to explain the uh, filament tip before I get started on all that so I made a YouTube short yesterday and someone was asking me why I chose to go the uh, flat filament cut as opposed to an angled when using the AMS and the reason is I uh, I came across an error and I walked in and the print was about yay high or no yay high right there because I can see the line and uh, it had stopped and it was trying to load in this filament so I noticed that it said filament may be stuck yada yada so I clicked you know everything's fine continue and when I did I saw it push the filament forward in through the tool head and it was rolling forward and I can just see it going forward and then it would retract it going forward retract it and at a certain point when it went forward I heard it click or snap you know it made this noise and then I figured oh look at it it's it's sharp and what's happening is there's not enough surface area on that sharp tip to contact with the leftover filament from the last spool that's still on the tool head so I figured if I just cut it it'll have enough surface area to hit the other filament that's already in the tool head and push it out because I already had tried it about three times with the sharp cut filament I pressed everything's fine continue it didn't work I did it again and again and that's when I heard that click and that's when I had that idea so in the tool head we have a piece of filament in there that's left over and it's most likely flat coming from the end of the spool now if you got another piece of filament that's being fed in through the extruder and it's at a sharp tip it's coming in it doesn't have a lot of surface area to contact with this and it might bend and go off to the side here and that's what I felt was happening every time it would go in I you know at a certain point I'd hear that click and I figured it would just bend over to the side and not really have enough surface area so I figured if I just cut it flat but when it reaches the uh, the filament that's left over in the tube it would have enough surface area when it meets it there it'll actually be able to push it through and so when I cut it and did that it actually went through so that's why I came to that conclusion in the previous video I said cutting it at an angle helps to load it in through here through that yellow hole there but I also experienced the same thing with an angled cut at a certain point so that's when I thought to myself hey now I'm experiencing with the angled cut too where I'm putting it in and it's kind of giving me a hard time I think you just gotta angle it right so as of late I've been cutting it straight and feeding it through and it's been working sometimes it gets stuck but I'll straighten out the filament and kind of angle it in the right way and try to get it through and eventually it gets through that hole and then comes out into the tool head here all right guys I'm gonna start out with this and guess what I'm just gonna bend it <laughs> works great bending it works great just putting it on sometimes can be a little hassle for me but honestly it's all good just bring this forward I just lean over and find the right angle and hey cool 
And I don't know how much it matters, but it's ever so slightly off, as you can see here. And then there's nothing here because there's a tiny bit of lip. I don't know if any of that really matters, but I try to get it as perfect as possible. So then I'll just try to get it right where I feel like both sides are pretty equal. And yeah, more or less, it's looking good. I'm just gonna scrape this part off. Very nice, get that print started, wait. Yep, we got enough filament to do another one. So we're good to go on that front. Now for this one. Ah, the jingle. Super clean prints. I had to lubricate the Y axis yesterday for this machine as well yesterday. So these bottom two needed it. When I was pulling and pushing this uh, build plate forward, after, or after, yeah, after I got the um, message that the, that the Y guide rail needs to be lubricated, oh man, I never noticed it, but it really, uh, it really catches. It was really dried out because I'm running these things 24/7, so it probably needed it pretty bad. But nonetheless, I'm I keep up with it. I put that Marksman. Uh, 3-in-1 WD-40 oil, multi-purpose. I think it's 3-in-1, not multi-purpose. All right, that's ready to go. All right, guys, time to take care of this one. All right, if I can avoid taking these off and flexing them too, all the better, which I definitely can avoid it. So that's good. Get this printed out. And this one here. Very nice. And all these filaments are still looking like they can print out a lot more, so that's good. All right, these boxes are slowly but surely getting filled up. Ah, we still got however much is in there. We can probably do the same, maybe even a couple extra. How many are in there? One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. Yeah, we can do about seven, eight more. So before I unload it and start assembling, we definitely can do some more there. Oh, what happened here? Ooh, hot bed temperature malfunction. Whoa. I hope that's all right. Okay, let me X that out. An abnormality occurs during the heating process of the hot bed. The heating modules may be broken. Well, that's that's not good. Let's see if it happens again. I'm going to stop this and give this uh, printer a reset. I'm just going to wait a few seconds and then turn it back on. Hopefully, it's just a glitch. I won't have to go through support. And let's get this started. Very cool. Wait. There you have it. Alright. Happy printing, printer number two. You know, the other day I was thinking about those jingles from these 3D printers. And I thought to myself, during the designing process of designing these 3D printers, I wonder why they said, you know what, I want these printers to jingle. Is it because they see it as an appliance? A tool slash appliance because you know you got like washing machines making those sorts of jingles so I wonder <laughs> if some guys like hey let's make these jingle like like the washing machine because maybe they enjoy it maybe every time they wash their clothes and they hear that jingle they go yeah we're gonna have some clean clothes pretty soon and uh, hey, you know what I feel the same way about these 3d printers Every time I hear that jingle, I go, awesome. We're going to have a reliable print. Because if you guys have seen what I had to go through with the Creality CR10 SEs, oh man, it was not fun. 
was not fun at all. A lot of wasted filament. Um, and so when I come in and I happen to walk into the printer room, let's say an hour after a print and everything's printing good, I have appreciated that so much as opposed to walking in and two out of four printers are just out of whack, scratching the print bed. I, I don't even want to relive it, but yeah, that's why when I walk into this uh, 3D printer room and see it printing all good, I'm super thankful I did upgrade to Bamboo Lab A1 as opposed to the Creality CR10 SE. And I mean, can you blame them? Can you blame uh, Creality? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I say that because they mention it themselves. Hey, we're a hobby 3D printing uh, company. And so, oh, and here's another reason why one would want to cut their filament. If, let's say, it has this like burnt tip that I was mentioning yesterday in the short, definitely I would cut that. Looks like a, you know, from the who's, their finger. All right, it's an early morning, guys. <laughs> so, just cut the tip there. Going to straighten this out. Get this loaded onto uh, one. And I'm actually going to start with number three and four. Or number three, and it's going to go back to one. So I don't want these uh, just staying on the AMS all the time and not being used. And this is, these uh, spools are all from the uh, old box that I have down down there just below the camera right now just gonna feed that through very nice and let's get this print going very cool I forgot I gotta do this with the AMS so I'm gonna choose number four because that's just been sitting there and print all right adding another empty spool to the empty spool pile over here but that about does it guys. Today is going to be a little bit of a shorter video. Just doing the run of the mill. Trying to keep up with production here. I've been building them out as I go along. But this time I'm going to just let it um, pile up. And uh, go from there. And it looks like that error message is gone. So that's good. Thank you guys for joining me on today's vlog. Until next time. Peace, love, and joy.